Hey everyone, in today's Wrath of Math lesson, we're going to talk a bit about unicursal graphs and unicursal lines. A graph is said to be unicursal if it contains an open trail that contains every edge of the graph. Such an open trail is called a unicursal line. This is a viewer requested video. I always appreciate those viewer requests, so be sure to leave yours down in the comments. So again, a unicursal line is an open trail that contains every edge of a graph. Remember that by definition, an open trail starts and ends at distinct vertices. That's what open means. It may repeat vertices in the internal part of the trail, but it may not repeat edges. So that is what an open trail is. Before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's quickly take a look at an example of a unicursal line. This graph is a unicursal graph because it contains a unicursal line. Going from the vertex V1 to the vertex V2 to the vertex V3, like so, highlighting in this sort of purple color, this is an open trail. It starts and ends at distinct vertices that contains every edge of the graph. So that is a unicursal line, thus this is a unicursal graph. In some contexts, you may also find it suitable to include the edges being traversed in your description of a trail. In which case, that unicursal trail would look like this. You see we have a vertex, then the edge traversed, then the vertex, then the edge traversed, then the vertex. These unicursal lines are also sometimes called semi-Eulerian trails. And you might notice that indeed the idea of a unicursal line is pretty similar to Eulerian circuits. Remember that an Eulerian circuit is a circuit in a graph that contains every edge of the graph, like this circuit in this graph that I'm highlighting in purple. Again, that is an Eulerian circuit, a circuit in a graph that contains every edge. A graph that contains an Eulerian circuit is, of course, called an Eulerian graph. So the only difference between an Eulerian circuit and a unicursal line, which again is also sometimes called a semi-Eulerian trail, the only difference is that an Euler circuit is closed, so it starts and ends at the same vertex, whereas a unicursal line is open. It starts and ends at distinct vertices, but they both contain every edge of the graph they belong to. Notice that in this graph, before adding that extra edge that joined V1 and V3, we had this unicursal line from V1 to V2 to V3. This is no longer a unicursal line of the graph since it doesn't contain the edge joining V1 and V3. In fact, this graph contains no unicursal line and is thus not a unicursal graph. And we can easily characterize which graphs are unicursal. We begin by remembering our characterization of Eulerian graphs. Remember that a connected graph is Eulerian, meaning it contains an Eulerian circuit, if and only if all of its vertices have an even degree. Like in this Eulerian graph here, we see all of these vertices have an even degree of 2. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson proving that theorem, which I definitely recommend checking out if you haven't seen it, especially since we will use that result to characterize unicursal graphs. So looking back at our Eulerian graph, if we delete that edge v1, v3 again, this is now the unicursal graph we were looking at originally. Notice that, of course, not all of its vertices have even degree. In fact, exactly two of its vertices have an odd degree. And as it turns out, that is the key. A connected graph is unicursal, meaning it contains a unicursal line, if and only if it has exactly two odd vertices. And in such a graph, a unicursal line must start at one odd vertex and end at the other odd vertex. So let's see another example on a graph that's a little more interesting than the last one we were looking at, and then we'll call it a day. So here's an example of another unicursal graph. If we take a quick look at the degrees of these vertices, we see we've got degrees of 2, 3, 2, 
3, and 2. Thus, this graph will be unicursal because exactly two of its vertices have an odd degree. An example of a unicursal line in this graph starts at B, then goes to A, then goes to E, then goes to D, and then goes to B, trying to juggle the, uh, the marker and the highlighter, <laughs> goes to B, so I'll highlight that, and then from B it goes to C, and then from C it goes to D. That is an open trail in the graph that contains every edge. And notice how it starts and ends at the two odd vertices of the graph. With a little bit of thought, you should be able to explain why a unicursal line must start and end at the two odd degree vertices of a graph. Let me know in the comments what you come up with, or if you'd like a little bit of a pointer to help figure it out. Now, we will not prove this characterization of unicursal graphs in this lesson, but let me briefly describe the proof to you with this example graph. The proof uses our characterization of Eulerian graphs, that a connected graph is Eulerian if and only if all of its vertices have an even degree. First, if we suppose that we've got exactly two odd vertices in a connected graph, then we could create a new graph by adding an additional vertex and then joining those two odd vertices to that vertex with an edge. Say we call that new vertex W. Then, since we've increased the degrees of the two odd vertices by one, all of the degrees in our graph must now be even. Thus, our new graph is Eulerian. So we could imagine an Eulerian circuit that starts and stops at our new vertex W. Then, deleting that vertex and its incident edges, in other words, reverting back to our original graph, would leave us with a unicursal line, the remains of that Eulerian circuit. Conversely, if we suppose that our graph has a unicursal line, then suppose that the unicursal line starts at some vertex B and ends at some vertex D. We could once more add a new vertex, thus creating a new graph, and add an edge joining the starting vertex of that unicursal line to the new vertex, and join the ending vertex of the unicursal line to the new vertex. Again, we'll call that new vertex W. Then, in the newly created graph with W, we could create an Eulerian circuit by beginning at W, and then going straight to what was the beginning vertex of that unicursal line. Then we could proceed along the original unicursal line until we get to the ending vertex of the unicursal line, then complete the Eulerian circuit by traversing that new edge to get back to W. Thus, since the new graph that we've created contains an Eulerian circuit, all of its vertices must have even degrees. Then, by deleting W and getting back to our original graph, we have reduced the degrees of exactly two of those even degree vertices, and we've reduced them by one each. Thus, they are now both odd. The degrees of all the other vertices are unchanged by deleting W, and so all of their degrees are still even, and so in our graph that contains a unicursal line, it has exactly two odd vertices. So that's just a quick illustration of the proof. And that's what unicursal graphs and lines are. Again, a graph is unicursal if it contains an open trail that contains every edge of the graph. And a connected graph will be unicursal if and only if it has exactly two odd vertices. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.